Pastor James is the co-founder of Exodus 90. James, tell us a little bit about your background story. Yeah, thanks, Jeff. Uh, it's awesome to, to share this Great time to with you. you. Yeah, yeah. Um, yes, yeah, so I am from central Indiana, uh, originally a uh, suburb of Indianapolis, uh, public school K through 12. Um, parents were cradle Catholics, kind of had their conversion or reversion, if you will, through Curcio, the Curcio uh-huh. movement. Uh, and through um, a young men's fraternity, I was, uh, you know, took the faith pretty seriously in high school and ended up going to the seminary uh, right out of college. So I went up to the University of St. Thomas in St. Paul, Minnesota. So I studied uh, philosophy, Catholic studies, and classical languages there. I then studied theology for a little bit uh, at an arch abbey in Indiana, uh, where I actually discerned out of seminary formation uh, about four, four or five years ago at this point. So, uh, yeah. shortly after that, uh, actually, actually the, really the day I left, <laughs> um, quite by Providence, uh, a priest, uh, who had been a mentor to me sent, uh, the words, uh, a word document that had the word Exodus on it. Mm-hmm. And, uh, that's kind of shaped my life, I suppose, for the last four years, uh, entirely. So, um, that's a little bit of my background. I live currently in Fort Wayne, Indiana. I'm newly married, uh, married about eight months ago to my beautiful wife, Colleen. Congratulations. And, uh, thank you. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So we uh, just got a house, first house. There's a lot of newness in my life, I suppose. And uh, also a lot of penance because I'm on Exodus like a number of other guys uh, right now. You're so, doing it right now? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Well, let's talk a little bit about Exodus. How did it start? James. Yeah, yeah. So it was uh, started by a uh, priest from the Diocese of Lafayette, Indiana, uh, when he was on assignment in a seminary on the East Coast uh, called Mount St. Mary's. Uh, so it was just a formation program uh, for, you know, obviously, you know, young men with great intentions to serve the church, uh, but like the rest of us, had habits that were very much in the way of doing that in full freedom. Uh, so we just tried an experiment. And uh, came up with something truly beautiful um, that I've since really come to believe is is inspired. Um, and after years of of piloting this with success after success, um, he sent it to me and just said, "Hey, you know, I think you probably have what it takes to figure out how to share this with others." And uh, it was kind of as simple as that. So um, he's not involved in our ministry really at all uh, today, uh, and that was many years ago now. Um, and what's happened since then has been really amazing. Um, but uh, it started as a, yeah, a response to a profound need, formation of priests. And, um, you know, we've pretty successfully translated that into a, a formation experience for laymen. And so 92% of our guys are laymen today. Mm-hmm. Um, average age of guys is about 36. Uh, and over 50% of guys, though, are under the age of 34, which is interesting. Uh, when you think about most men's ministries, uh, which struggle to really attract young men. Um, So we're doing that pretty successfully. And um, yeah, we're really, really passionate about the work we're doing and really think we're on the front of uh, something, something beautiful um, today. So I agree. So we, you talked just a little bit about the age bracket. Who who is Exodus 94? Yeah. So um, the whole goal of this is uh, to bring formation to men who are looking for direction. Um, and so for us, uh, I, you know, when we, I mean, the whole marketing plan around Exodus, all of the investments we make in terms of delivery, all of our messaging, we're targeting young men. We always picture young fathers. So young guys who are newly married um, having kids, trying to figure things out. Um, now, by focusing on young guys, and all the research on this is super clear, when you focus on the millennial demographic, um, mm. older generations follow and so do younger, uh, whereas messaging for younger does not necessarily translate up and messaging older doesn't translate down. Um, and so that's why we, you know, we've stayed very focused uh, on you know, our audience, they are uh, at least at this point engaged Catholics. Um, 95% of our guys go to mass every Sunday, even before Exodus. Uh, They're not necessarily practicing the sacrament of penance uh, regularly. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, but um, that's who we have in mind is uh, precisely the young guys who the parish really struggles to engage or motivate. Um, not everywhere, obviously, not for robust parishes, but for most. Um, and that's who we're chasing. Uh, the, the reason we're so focused on men and uh, why Exodus 90 is a spiritual exercise for young men um, is that we know that uh, when we can capture and really motivate a man to be faithful to the church, um, that's going to reverberate. And, and the research on that is also very clear. The singular most predictive factor on whether or not a child will practice the faith is the faithfulness, not necessarily, and I don't mean this disparagingly, but not necessarily that of the mother, it is the father. Right. Um, and again, I don't mean anything negative by that. It just shows that uh, the man is absolutely fundamentally critical um, to the faith of future generations. And so our vision for this and how this fits into evangelization today is great. How can we take faith and intimacy with Christ to a new level uh, for men and, and young men, young fathers? And we'll just, you know, have, have trust that, um, what we know to be true will, will reverberate in the family and in the faith of future generations. Uh, obviously, you know, <laughs> talk to any woman with problems and her problem is typically a man in her life. Uh, and so we like to think as well that even though Exodus is not for women, um, that, you know, that's how we're influencing, you know, the happiness of wives um, is by, by really freeing their men to be more available, you know, to them. So, um, that's our target. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about Exodus 90 from the standpoint, what's involved, what's required. I'm doing it right now. I can tell you it's hard. <laughs> yeah. So uh, Exodus can be uh, pretty, pretty brutal. Um, but the thing I always say is like, if you take the penances one by one, uh, you realize that it's very, it is doable, you know, at the same time. Absolutely. Um, you know, most people, uh, we, we, you know, in the contemporary church, we don't have a great um, experience with, with penance and, and our, you know, that's mostly, you know, just viewed as um, something we do for Lent and we give up minor things that may be hard kind of, but um, you know, maybe not. So all we're doing here is kind of representing um, something that is so clear in the catechism and so clear in the words of Jesus that, we must deny ourselves the comforts of the world in order to be available to him and to truly hear him. So uh, the penances for Exodus are as follows, short, cold showers, uh, regular, intense exercise, full night sleep. Um, we encourage at least seven hours. We abstain from alcohol and desserts and sweets, eating between meals and drinking soda or any sweetened drinks. We really, you know, with Exodus, we're trying to return technology uh, to its proper domain. Um, so like we don't believe in like leisuring on, on technology. So uh, that's a whole maybe different conversation. Um, but obviously it's useful. It's a tool, um, but it can master you. And that's why uh, during Exodus, uh, you really are asked to only use your technology platforms, your mobile devices, your computer for, for work or for school purposes. Uh, you only listen to music that lifts your soul to God and uh, you refrain from any non-essential material uh, purchases. So like, you know, um, obviously many people medicate difficult times with many of these things, right? Uh, whether that's eating or drinking or whether that's um, just buying things or whether that's, um, you know, just the distractions of technology and sports, um, and so with Exodus, like when we look at it, you know, all we're really doing um, really is, is, is removing some of these distractions uh, and dependencies and encouraging our men in the silence to, to approach Jesus Christ uh, and know his love for them and their identity uh, as sons of the Father more fully. Um, and um, yeah, it's our fundamental belief that when we can do that, when we can remove some of this stuff, like we will meet him in the silence and uh, that will, that will reverberate in freedom. Mm -hmm. Well, we talked a little bit about the asceticism part. 
um, that asceticism part, for me, the hardest thing are the cold showers. Yeah, that's right. And I didn't even mention those at the front. Yeah. 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 So everyone talks about the cold showers and uh, they're, yeah, they're terrible, but especially when you live up north. Yeah. When it's Uh, like four degrees for the high here where I live today. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. So, yeah, it's so true. No, it's brutal. But um, I don't know. It's just really important. And, you know, look at the lives of the saints. They take on voluntary sufferings all the time. And you're not going to find a safe a saint who hasn't suffered a lot. Um, and, you know, how can we expect that to be otherwise for us, right? So at a time where, like, we are so pampered and corporations make a lot of money making things more convenient and more comfortable, it takes – like voluntary acts of the will to make ourselves uncomfortable today. And that's not to say I'm not keenly aware of tragedies and, Mm -hmm. and all kinds of circumstances that are very painful to go through. Um, But, you know, there's large parts of our lives that, that are not very hard um, at least in the West uh, today. So um, when we can return, you know, to this ancient, but largely lost tradition of asceticism, um, our men find it to be, rewarding uh difficult but rewarding um so again you know this isn't meant to be something though that's like about a you know just trying harder or taking on all this stuff in fact one of the things you realize very early on in exodus is you have way more time on your hands than you thought you did um so that's one i mean people from the outside will 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 typically criticize this like man this is just too much for guys like you know they don't have time for all this stuff and um you know it's just not true. Like when you talk, talk to the men through Exodus, it's like, wow, I have so much time on my hands. I have new time for prayer. Um, and so that's why we encourage a holy hour every day of Exodus 90, but a minimum of 20 minutes of contemplative prayer. And um, we also encourage a fraternity meeting every week. So this is not a self-help thing. This is about building brotherhoods um, of accountability um, together. So, uh, that, you know, you have time for those things. You have time for prayer. You have time for fraternity and you have time for your family again, when you realize like how much, you know, if you're like most other people, how much time you're wasting on things you don't need. Um, so I don't, you know, it's not meant to sound super hardcore here. It's just, I think it's worth challenging some of the things that we think we need. No, on, that, on that piece, it's interesting because, one of the men I was talking to told me, you know, what we found is uh, with replacing television and watching sports all the time, we're doing family game nights. We're playing board games. We're playing cards. We're spending more time together as a family, which is one of the benefits, like you spoke about, that men are seeing. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So we just wrapped up research, actually. I mean, to be honest with you, the fact that Exodus has grown from you know, nothing to, so we have over 15,000 men now through Exodus and about three years. It's pretty amazing. And, and, and it, it's, it's, it's been a really fun and surprising. Yeah. I never expected this um, in any way. So as we were growing, one of the things um, we were eager to find out is just to really study, like, what are the core benefits that men receive through Exodus? Mm-hmm. And one of the things that was so cool, you know, to untap and, in this program effectiveness research. Uh, and I suppose I should give a shout out to our Sunday visitor who funded that for us and very grateful for that. Um, but, you know, 90% of men, you know, report a positive impact on their marriage and that manifests itself in greater communication. Uh, and it's no surprise that that's, that's the case, um, you know, when you're not distracted, you know. So we, we love, you know, we love hearing those stories like, um, about men who are, are way more vulnerable and way more available, um, firstly to the Lord in their prayer, but then that reverberates into their life uh, with their spouse and with their children. And, uh, yeah, and I've, I've got a new experience of this. I'm going through Exodus right now. I'm newly married and, and, um, I can even find myself, I'm a ma- I'm a huge Colts fan, for example, huge. And, uh, it can get in the way though, you know, and like there's an attachment there and it's been really nice to, all right, there's all this off season stuff going on and I'm sure all kinds of, you know, and 
free agent stuff is going to start happening soon. And I know absolutely nothing. And that is very freeing um, to just have no clue. I have no, you know, no clue. Um, that's, you know, just manifests itself and just, you know, pretty simple, um, but way more conversations with my wife, even in the first couple of months. So. So one of the things that we talked just briefly about was prayer. And we talked about 20 to 60 minutes a day of prayer, that holy hour of prayer. And you do have material that does help with part of that. Let's talk about that, James. Yes. Yeah, so every day of Exodus, you receive a uh, meditation uh, that goes with a scripture. And so we, we really like almost, we almost walk through the entire book of Exodus where, you know, not, not every verse. Um, and the goal of that is twofold, right? Uh, one, that story of the Israelites is a powerful image uh, for men today who, um, if we look at the, the, the Israelites at the, at the beginning of the book of Exodus, uh, it's really ironic because they're very powerful and they're very strong and they are growing and yet they're enslaved and they're, they've accepted that. And if we look at men, men are so powerful. Men are so capable and they can do so many great things for God. Um, but unfortunately, it's, it's our strengths that, un, you know, can enslave us uh, the most. Um, and so, regard, like, you know, Exodus is just a powerful image, you know, for the men. And we kind of guide them day by day through that story. Um, yeah, it's a long, hard journey in the desert. You want to quit all the time. You complain all the time. Um, but uh, it's a powerful image that, uh, you know, is really meant to open up a conversation with Christ, right? So, like... We, you know, are very big about this, but like con contemplation is not for um, the select few. And I think that's one thing um, in the church today. And even like the pretty engaged church, the practicing church, I think it's just really misleading um, when we believe that contemplative graces are, are for the few uh, or for the, even just the religious. I think that's incredibly harmful and, and not true. Um, and so one of the things that we're really passionate about is, is guy, you know, some people would say, right, like, how can you expect guys to do a holy hour? And it's like, well, like, I mean, these are baptized sons of God. So what you're saying when you say that is like, children cannot communicate with their father. Uh, and with Christ, who has a face, you know, who we encounter through the sacramental life of the church. Uh, and so we were just really unapologetically commissioning men to pray. Like, and we don't make exceptions to that. Um, you know, uh, St. Francis de Sales, somebody just told me this. I didn't even know this until this week, but I guess he said, if you don't have time to pray an hour, you should pray two hours. And uh, I get that life is full. I am keenly aware of that. But um, when we're not praying, it's, you, you're not seeing anything. I mean, reality and what we see is like ha not even half the equation. I mean, the spiritual realities that are at work in our lives and in the world are, are so great. And, and, and it's, it's impossible to be attuned to them without prayer. So uh, we really commission guys and we trust them and we trust the Lord that when these men set this time aside, he will speak. Uh, and that starts in the scripture that starts in the word. And uh, from there it's, it's a matter of a, it's as simple as the Father, the Son, and the Spirit speaking to, to men who are capable of, of great prayer. Um, so I guess one distinction I would make uh, is obviously some saints use the term contemplation and, and define it you know, for their noble purposes. Um, but when you look at the catechism, the term contemplation is like, uh, very much, much more broad. And so uh, you know, we've gone ahead and just really encouraged men to not be afraid to venture into the depths of, of, of prayer and, 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 and allow the Lord to, to do what, what the Lord does uh, when you give him that time. The meditations are really well written. Excellent job on that. Yeah, I appreciate that. So we, um, it's actually, I mean, Exodus is, it's an ongoing project for us. I mean, we're working on it every day and, um, you know, the, fir the first version of the program, I'd say it was pretty, pretty rough. And, you know, I don't think any of us intended for Exodus to become what it's be 
became, you know, so uh, this past year we, we really rewrote uh, the entire thing to be much more systematic than it's been in years past. Um, and the author is a, a good friend of mine who's become our director of mission. His name's Nathaniel uh, Benversi. So he studied um, under Dr. Briel, incredible mentor and intellectual figure up in St. Paul. Uh, it's also studied uh, with Dr. Hahn and uh, just incredibly together uh, author. And so we're really excited about um, just how the content of the experience is uh, much better. And obviously we're working to make it, make it even better. So. One of the other things of Exodus 90 is the fraternity, the small group band of brothers. Why, why is that so important, James? Yeah. So um, I guess to answer the question directly, um, like holiness never happens alone, never happens in a silo. And you need your brothers to tell you the truth. Um, we all have a, a, a lot of great in us and we all have another side. And when we're honest with ourselves, um, that becomes apparent. And it takes a perspective of other people to help you arrive at, at the truth. And so, um, you know, the fraternity is there um, to really help lead you into the truth. You know, the, the group dynamic can be incredibly powerful to take you places where you can't go by yourself or where you can't go just with another guy. And um, so we're very committed to the fact that, you know, without a fraternity, you're not doing Exodus. So it's like, if you want to do this by yourself, that's fine. You're just not doing Exodus 90. Um, you know, we're very, very passionate about that. The other thing I would say is um, that's why I think Exodus is so such a captivating idea is that it's hard, like the sell to most normal men, like, Hey, be vulnerable to another, a group of another, another guys. Like it just makes me cringe on the inside when I hear that. Like, I don't actually feel great about that. It's like, I, why would I do that? Mm -hmm. um, but that's, what's so powerful about this. It's like, it's a concrete task. It's 90 days. It's hard. Um, and you're going to need other guys to do this with. And uh, all of a sudden, accountability becomes possible, right? So uh, it's, there's a lot of, you know, not, I mean, I think small groups are kind of becoming more popular in Catholicism. Certainly they are the bread and butter of, you know, non-denominational non Christianity. Um, but even in those contexts, like accountability is a whole different thing than just meeting in a small group. And when Exodus fraternities are doing it right, like, yeah, you're talking about your sin. Like you're talking about your relapses into pornography. You're talking about your unfaithfulness. You're talking about um, how you can be better. And uh, you're just telling the truth. You're telling the truth about yourself and um, just allowing your brothers and allowing Christ to, to love you through that and bring you to a greater uh, maturity in the faith. Talked to quite a few men, and there's a lot of different whys. And you touched on just a couple of those whys that I've heard from other men. Why do Exodus 90? What are some of the the whys behind it? Yeah, so for us, we've really stayed focused on on freedom. So uh, that's broad, uh, mm -hmm. obviously. But when you also when you look at Scripture, uh, I mean, this is so clear that freedom is one of the fruits of a relationship with Jesus. Uh, when we are in relationship with him, we are, we are truly free, free to love, to lay down our lives, to sacrifice, right? When yeah. we're not free, you, you, you can't love. And when you can't love, you're not a man. Um, so for us, it starts with freedom. And so the wise for coming into Exodus, uh, they're as custom crafted as everybody's own idol, right? I mean, we all have our idols. We all have our are uh, the ways uh, that we get distracted. So, um, you know, that can be, you know, wasting away our lives on social media platforms. That can be um, addictions to pornography and masturbation. Uh, that's a very common thing um, for the men that come to Exodus. Uh, that can be, um, you know, sins of speech, you know, slandering, gossiping, not telling the truth. Um, all of these things become motives, right? And so uh, I, I was recently at an event and someone um, asked me, like, do you think you're forming the Navy SEALs of Catholicism? And um, 
my answer to that question was like directly no. Like I'm, I'm really not interested in that. I'm not right. forming elite Catholics. I'm not doing anything of the sort. In fact, like when you do this, you come in, in contact with your dependence on God. And um, it's very humbling. You know, it's very, very humbling. So, um, yeah, it's not, <laughs> when you index it, it's very rarely like, man, I am so great. It's like, wow, I had no idea what, you know, these simple things that are not intrinsically evil in some cases, how those things are keeping me from intimacy with Christ and the church and, and our wives and children, et cetera. Um, so. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I noticed in here that um, they don't talk about on the website in, in the material is as much of going to confession as part of this, the sacrament of penance. Right. And I know it's recommended monthly in some of your material, but I didn't see it directly. Can we talk about that a little bit? Yeah, that's an interesting thought. So I'll just, to be direct with you, that's not maybe as intentional as you'd think. Um, this started as a seminary formation program. And so when we released it, we were really interested to find out that most people didn't think it was Catholic enough. Uh, and the truth is like, when we look back at it, we were like, wow, we presume a lot about where people are at. Mm -hmm. And now that this has a completely different character than a seminary formation program, um, and less than 8% of the guys through Exodus are religious. It's like, wow, like we really do need to, to kind of revisit some of this stuff. Um, to make sure that it's clear. I mean, you're setting out on a spiritual exercise on a journey. Um, it makes no sense to do that with sin on your back. Mm -hmm. it, it doesn't have to be that way. Like the father wants more than that. Um, uh, yeah. So uh, I, to be honest with you, I think you probably just called us out on more ways. We, <laughs> we're trying to like remember where this is at now from where it was four years ago. Well, it, it's awesome, and I'll, I'll, we'll give the website later. But it, it you got to go to the website. If nothing else, you got to just watch the videos because because they're incredible. Yeah, Let's talk a little bit about the success of what you've seen so far, James, in Exodus ninety. Yes. Yeah, so when I launched Exodus. Um, you know, I did not think very much of it, to be honest with you. I was fresh out of the seminary. I really wanted to go to business school and like go get a real job. Um, always had a passion for the stock market. So I thought I wanted to do something in equities. Um, <laughs> and yeah, like it's as simple as that. It just, we didn't, I didn't, you know, think very much of it. So in our first year though, we did, you know, when we did the math, it's like, wow, 700 and 50 guys did this. Mm -hmm. And then we started getting these calls from people whose lives were like really touched by this and really transformed. Um, and that was fine. Like that, that was great. But um, the thing we didn't expect was 90 days to Easter in 2017. So a couple of years ago, mm -hmm. we, we grew like hundreds of percent in two days. Mm -hmm. um, and what we learned was the men who had been through Exodus just told a lot of people about it and um, brought friends and that's continued to happen. Uh, just a, a pretty profound multiplication effect. Um, like we have a very small team on the back of this, um, it, like very small. And, and I have a keen sense for how fragile this has been, you know, at multiple points. Um, I would say chances of success when we started were very small, I mean, you know, just very small. Starting things is not an easy thing and it takes a lot of perseverance um, and a lot of stubbornness. And I'd say, especially in Catholicism, where people are generally skeptical of new things when we kind of think we have everything figured out. Um, you know, but to be honest with you, uh, the thing that has just driven home for me so many times is like, at this point, it's just like, I like, this is God's spiritual exercise. Like, it just is. And, um, you know, so this past winter, we added 8,500 8, guys um, who are currently doing Exodus right now. So uh, 750 to 8,500. Yeah, so 15,000 total in about three years. Um, I wish I, yeah, I guess from my side of things, um, having seen this from where it started, um, I do my best to work hard. The people we're bringing onto our team work hard, but we are all 
keenly aware that like this is only doing what it's doing because it is what it says it is. And because God really wants free men, like that's the bottom line. I mean, uh, when we look at the scandals in the church today, um, at, at the core, there's zero freedom, like zero freedom. Uh, there's just no self mastery. And not just in like explicit sins against chastity, but also just in an inability of some of our leaders to tell the truth. Um, that there's not freedom there, right? So um, when, as this thing has just continued to grow, um, and as so many men are kind of confronting the challenges we're facing as a church in the United States, um, you know, the truth is they know that they can be better. They, they know they can take greater responsibility for their lives. And that's the part they can play to kind of channel some of this agitation uh, towards certain circumstances. Um, and, you know, again, um, yeah, we never, yeah, it's all very, very humbling because it's a, it's a dark time if we're honest with ourselves. And the fact that Exodus is serving right now is just a beautiful thing. Um, because at the core of the crisis, it's a, it's a crisis in masculine freedom. And that's what this is about, a 90-day spiritual exercise for masculine freedom. And it will show you what you need to be free from, too. Yeah, that's true. How do you get started doing Exodus 90, James? Yeah, so super simple. Uh, yeah, so the site's there, exodus90.com. Uh, we just launched a mobile application uh, for Exodus a couple months ago. Uh, so it's as simple as just going to one of your app stores, whether that's Google Play or um, the app store through iOS, downloading and inviting a couple of friends. Um, so... There's preparatory materials. Um, the thing I guess I would say at the front is uh, Exodus is challenging. Like if you're just like, it's just not really like a lot of things uh, which are typically geared just towards the mind or like something to learn. Um, it's, a, it's a challenge, right? So something worth preparing for. And if you're married, it's really important to let your spouse in on uh, what it will entail. And uh, we've done our best uh, to make that clear from literally page one. Uh, assume, and then we assume, right, that guys won't read everything. And so we duck that in or very early on in meditations to just like, hey, this is gonna, going to affect your life. So communication with your spouse is very important uh, about what this entails. And, um, but all that is to say it's as simple as finding guys and inviting them. Uh, the thing that I will also say is that Exodus is, um, it can be a cool opportunity to build a, a brotherhood if you don't have one. So some of us have that luxury, others don't. And, and so for the pre-existing men's groups or apostolates, it fits in really well. The thing we always say is, like, I have no desire to become the next Knights of Columbus. I don't care. Like, that's not why we're doing this. Uh, we're doing this to free men. And so if you're not a Columbus, you'll be a better one if you do Exodus 90. Like if you're a part of a lay movement, you will be more available to your charism if you do Exodus 90. Uh, and so we're really passionate about like serving the pre-existing causes that are in the church. And, uh, but for those guys who are not involved in those things, which is a lot of the guys that are doing Exodus, it's like, hey, here we go. Here's a chance to form a brotherhood and, uh, um, you know, to find the, you know, the freedom you're seeking, the friendship you're seeking uh, as well. It's pretty interesting. After a Saturday morning mass, I go out uh, and there's probably 10 guys standing out there talking to each other. And then I noticed they had the Exodus book. I'm like, oh, so you guys doing Exodus 90? Oh yeah, we're doing Exodus 90. Are you doing it? Yeah. <laughs> Ask yeah. about their experience. But I, I've just found, I've talked to so many men across the country, James, that are doing this that there is something there that it, it's needed and it's definitely got a spark that's starting to turn into a fire. Yeah, that's awesome. I mean, we're, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, I've shared already on the show that it's kind of amazing and it was not our expectation or even the plan um, at all. And so uh, we're just, we're blessed to be able to serve the church right now as we are. And um yeah, when, you know, when I meet groups, and, and I do frequently, it's, it's, a, it's just beautiful. It's just beautiful to see how men are looking for more. They're looking for more. 
and they know they've glimpsed that in their own lives before. Um, and uh, it's just exciting how so many men are willing to make themselves uncomfortable uh, for a little bit to just be more available to Christ. Um, so, yeah. Well, the other thing I found, James, is over the years working with men, we like a challenge. Yeah. And we, yeah. we, we like to be challenged. And this is something that does challenge you. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's, uh, it's true. I mean, when you ask very little of people, especially men, you're just, you're going to get a little response. But when you ask a lot, I think you'll be surprised by what, what can be done. So um, early on, even uh, when we were sharing this, the, the, you know, the rebukes were actually pretty frequent, like, no, the lay men can't do this. You know, they're too busy or, you know, whatever, you know, they'd come up with all these really like, when you look at it, it's like, yeah, either clerical or just strange, just an, and, uh, just not believing in the goodness and, 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 the, and the possibility for greatness that lies within the heart of every man. And so uh, it is a challenge and uh, it's so cool meeting guys who, who take it up and, and, and find what they're looking for. So you take your 80% number, about 12,000 men that are lay men have already said yes. That's right. <laughs> That's right. So <laughs> there's one guy in particular, a guy I really respect, actually. He was just like, nobody will do this. And, and he's a good friend of mine. So uh, as, year, as the years go by, it's just like I just remind him, like, yeah, nobody's doing it, you know? Like, nobody's taking it up. So, yeah. So can you start at any time? Yeah. So obviously um, – most of our guys start in January and obviously because the date of Easter fluctuates, the start date fluctuates. Uh, most guys start then to end on Easter. Uh, it's, it's, it's a beautiful time to do Exodus because obviously uh, by the time Lent rolls around, you know, you've already been through a Lent and a little bit more and uh, it culminates so powerfully when we celebrate the resurrection. I mean, when you have, I mean, scriptures on this are so clear. Like when you have died with Christ, you will rise with him. And um, so most of our men, they are, you know, kind of end there. Many start in September. So like fall, September sometime. Uh, I think it's like, yeah, well, that's consistent every year, the 26th to end on Christmas. Um, but guys start every day, you know, and that was not something that we necessarily expected. Um but yeah, they do start every day. And one of the things we're really excited about is as this continues to move is serving dioceses, serving uh, archdioceses around their feasts, the, the things they, you know, the dates they care about, and then raising up concrete intentions, whether that's for the renewal of the church or reparation for the sins of the diocese, or, you know, whatever it is, um, we're excited to be serving, um, you know, those other dates too. So, um, you know, it's, it's, it's something you can do um, when you're called to do it. Is there a cost to do the program, James? There is a cost to do the program. Uh, the first week of Exodus is free, so you can kind of get a feel for how it works. Uh, and then it's nine ninety nine a month for three months, so a little less than $30. Um, our vision for this is most of us are on some kinds of subscription service, at least the guys that we're targeting with the program are. And so it's like, all right, let's switch over your Spotify for a couple months. You don't need it. That'll mm -hmm. cover it. That was our vision for it. Um, so yes, there is a cost. Okay. Yeah. I've done the same thing with men. They're like, what do you mean? It costs $30 roughly. Okay. For three months, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. $10 a month. Like, yeah. How much money are you going to save on beer this month? <laughs> yeah. So that's an interesting story. I just got a testimony back because you, you don't, you know, you're not supposed to be spending money during Exodus apart from things that are essential for your life. And so a fraternity pooled all of their extra money together, money that they would have otherwise spent. And it totaled mm -hmm. over $13,000 in three months. Okay. So obviously those guys have some kind of capacity. They donated that to the charities they care about. Uh, and also, I mean, I'll just say it. We are a charity. They didn't donate it back to us. I don't care. I'm not asking for that. Uh, but you know, that just shows you like, it just puts numbers to like, don't i mean yeah for us uh, we're very unapologetic about the fact that it has a cost because it's very expensive to do the kind of work that we want to do and to improve exodus as we want to improve it over the next five and ten years well even and if so, you don't 
if you know what the cost of a website is to put together and maintain it and keep it going and then an app on top of that i mean there's hard costs behind this so there has to be some sort of cost to do the program yeah and yeah and a, the, it's yeah compared yeah. to what you're gonna get out of it yeah exactly you know and so uh yeah websites are one thing mobile applications are a completely different ball game and uh yeah that's that's why so we, um, you know, the other thing is just as Americans too, which is kind of our primary audience right now, um, you know, we associate value, you know, when things have a cost to them. And so um, I don't read free books because I'm, I think to myself, why would I read this? Like it's uh, okay. Like you just handed it to me, uh, but I will absolutely pay for, you know, the latest edition of a Ratzinger book. Absolutely. It has a cost because it's valuable and he has something to teach me. Um, and Ignatius deserves everything they, they get from it to do it. Um, so, you know, that's one of the things that we're pretty, um, yeah, unapologetic about. So when Exodus 90, when you're done with the program, you've done your 90 days, what, what is there to do? Yeah. So, uh, up to this point, the answer to that has been, um, just an encouragement to, mm-hmm. to keep going, you know, uh, Obviously, prayer, penance, fraternity, uh, not for 90 days. You know, and I think that's one of the fun, um, it's not a deception, but the guy guys by the end are like, you know, this, is, this wasn't a 90-day program, right? Like, you just, like, kind of, kind of adjusted how I'm living. And it's like, yeah, like, that's exactly the point. Uh, we're excited this year to be able to, to do more finally. Um, I'm actually not sure this publicly anywhere, so you and your listeners are getting this first. So we're finally releasing uh, ongoing spiritual exercises for after Exodus. Um, when the series is all done, mm-hmm. um, men will be led through the entire Bible uh, and through the whole narrative of salvation history. And so uh, the goal of each of these exercises is different. They're focused on a theme that relates to the core scripture. Um and it, that's for the, you know, that's mainly there for the guys that want to, to undertake them. You know, if, it, if Exodus 90 was enough and that's what you wanted, that's fine. Mm-hmm. You know, that's obviously, you don't have access to any of this other stuff unless you've been through um, the 90 days. Um, but most of the groups want to stay together and many of them do and are just kind of using other content. Right. Uh, and so we're excited to, to very much in the same spirit and spirituality of, of Exodus 90 to um, offer scripture and meditation with corresponding uh, asceticisms um, afterwards as well. So more info on those, I suppose, uh, towards Easter. So That's awesome. Uh, The thing, like you said, though, it is enough because, number one, uh, I have self-mastery and I understand that I can overcome the challenges. I know what my faults are. I know that what I can do and what I can't do. And I know that I can get by without watching Mad- March Madness. And my prayer <laughs> life improves. And I develop a band of brothers. Mm-hmm. You got a lot right there. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, that's exactly right. And um, that's, that's what you need. I mean, that's the secret sauce, I suppose, is, you know, when you're praying, when you're practicing asceticism and you've got a group, uh, you're going to be in good shape. Um, at least if you're telling the truth. Um, so, And I would put the challenge out there to men that haven't tried it yet to do it and to form that band of brothers and do it with them. Uh, it is a challenge. It's going to be hard, but you can do it and you'll be a better man. You'll be a better husband, a better father after you do the program because you will have accomplished something here that few men can actually put themselves through or have put themselves through. One question, James, why 90 days? Yeah. So uh, the whole vision for the 90 days is obviously not scriptural, right? You're not going to find that there. Uh, When you look at what's being addressed through Exodus, I mean, some guys come to it with addictions, you know, and chemical dependencies in the brain. Mm-hmm. So, so research on this is, um, I wouldn't say dogmatic, um, but the significance of the, the, of three months of 90 days, um, 
you know, is it, it comes up in the research like again and again and again about how you can truly form new um, pathways in your brain uh, if you abstain from a behavior for a period of time. And so, um, you know, a big and, and a core struggle for men today and a, a primary driver for why men come to Exodus is struggling with pornography. And the truth is that you can't just you can't just get over it, you know, and, 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 and it, it, it takes a, a serious commitment and a period of time for you to break out of some of these behaviors that are just ingrained in you and, and, and ways that you've lost the ability to, to make good choices. So um, anyway, we're really excited uh, because I mean, therapists reach out to us all the time because they're just like, I have never seen, how Mike, our therapy courses could have been more effective than when that's supplemented by a formation and spiritual exercise like Exodus. Um, and it's, it's clear, right? Because, you know, many men do need therapy and we're, all, we're very supportive and we're all about that. Um, but you, you, you need, your, your life needs to be in order. And um, something like, like Exodus can help with that. Um, so, that's where the significance of, of 90 comes in. And I would say this, men do break addictions to pornography and masturbation through Exodus 90. Um, one of the beautiful things that came back from our research is that there's an empirical um, benefit to men uh, who are struggling with masturbation and pornography uh, by the end. So um, it's awesome. It's awesome to see uh, how a little bit of prayer, penance and, and brotherhood can bear fruit uh, pr precisely with things that many men just give up on. Like they just think they're a part of their lives, but they're not. And um, there's nothing magical about it. Like there's no pill to take. Like you really simply need to, to, to kind of piece together some of these parts um, and it will bear fruit. That's awesome because it is one of our biggest challenges as men in society today is the, the pornography and masturbation issue from all the men I've talked to. For sure, for sure. And even like really good men, you know, and men who are doing good things. And it's not meant, you know, none of this to be, when I talk, you know, about this, it's not meant to be, a, I'm not trying to like make people feel guilty about it or anything like that. Um, but the truth is it's an epidemic and uh, it's a real struggle for, for good men, good Catholic men, practicing Catholic men. And, um, you know, it's, it's high time we had a context where that can be addressed um, without at the same time becoming obsessed over, um, mm -hmm. which is why like the marketing for Exodus or like, we don't consider it a chastity program, for example, uh, to us, it's, it's a spiritual exercise and you bring your idol and let, let Christ purify you from there. And he can do awesome things. Yeah, for sure. Amen. James, it's been great having you on the show. What else would you like to share with the audience? Hey, that's a great question. Um, well, I, well, I appreciate the time and the opportunity to, to share uh, with you, Jeff. Um, yeah, I guess the thing I would share with the audience is that, uh, yeah, if you are thinking about um, a challenge or if you're thinking about wanting to take your faith uh, to the next level, um, Exodus could be a great benefit to you. Um, maybe there's a loved one, you know, that you think could take, uh, take a journey, you know, and find something they need. Um, and I guess I'd also just talk to, you know, the guys who are interested in Exodus, but just kind of wary of reaching out about it. You know, it's a challenge. It's hard. Um, you have no idea how excited someone could be to be invited to this. We hear this all the time. It takes some getting outside of yourself. Uh, it's hard to do that, especially as men, but um, like it can really, you know, bring you together into brotherhood in a way that not only you might have been looking for, but all these guys that seem to have everything together around you have been looking for for a long time. Um, so I just, I just encourage you to, to follow those promptings um, if they're yours. Thanks, James. Awesome. Cheers. God bless. God bless.